Greetings fellow detectives, Wizard Kitten 774 here bringing you the next video in our walkthrough for Nancy Drew, Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. We just got permission from Fatima to mess with this trunk, which looks like this goes here, but we do not know the combination yet, so that doesn't help us. Um, we better head out then. There we go. What are you doing? What are you, is she like, she's still there, but she made noise. What on earth is she doing? Okay, anyway. Everyone is off the train now, or almost everyone is off the train, according to Frank and Joe, who are over at the Copper Fork here. So we should go snoop on the train. I'm assuming Charlena is still here. Yeah, sure. Charlena is the last person who would go hiking up a mountain with Tino Balducci to find a mine. That's not something she would ever, ever, ever do. Okay, what about in here? Let's see, John, I think, went. Yes, he did. Can we look at any of his stuff? No, we cannot. Um, oh, we can play the piano, though. That's good. If you do know how to play the piano, great. If you don't, there is, in the drawer over here, a list of the notes, because Camille was teaching herself how to play piano. But, here we go. Aha! A spyglass. I'll bet it's the one I need for Jake's projector. I'll bet it is. Sweet. There's things hide hidden in pianos all the time in Nancy Drew Mysteries. They're very sneaky places. Um, Tino. Aha, Tino is definitely gone, so we can finally get that amethyst out of the cigar clipper. Yes. Awesome. Okay. And now that we have the spyglass, we might as well go put it in the contraption. And I think we have five gemstones, but I think we need six. So we'll have to keep our eyes out for another one. And we also don't know where to put this them yet. This goes here. This goes here. So that's the spyglass. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, we need six. So we'll keep an eye out for another gemstone. For now, I think we should go to the grave area to go see where Camille is buried. Make our way through this beautiful train here. March along. I wonder what time of year this is. It's like snowy, but not snowy. It might be late spring. That's my guess. My guess is that it's late spring. Or, no, early spring, late winter. Okay, here we go. Yes? You startled me. Do you work here? I do. Are you looking for someone? Uh, yes. Camille Hurley. She died back in the 1800s. Ah, Camille. Beautiful crypt. Wonderful view. Good drainage. Whoever buried her must have loved her very much. May I go inside it? You may, but unfortunately you can't. Why not? I accidentally dropped the key down the grate that's in front of the crypt. If you can retrieve it, you can keep it. I'm having another one made. But if you do go into the crypt, just remember, you won't be alone. That's not creepy at all. Um, okay. Crypt. This looks a lot like the crypt from Ghost Dogs and Moonlight. Okay. It's locked. It's locked. So he said he dropped it in the grate. So well, this grate. there's the key. I need something long and sticky. Ah uh, ha ha! I know. Taffy! Long and sticky. Perfect! Gotcha. Got the key. Okay. So now we will unlock the door. Into Camille's crypt. What's this? Aha! Uh -huh. The last slug that we need. Excellent, excellent. Ooh, this is creepy. In the letter he wrote to his niece, Jake said she should go to Camille's grave and let Camille's goodness rub off on her. Rub as in rubbing, maybe? 
Yeah, probably. So to do that, I would need paper and a pencil. Do I have paper and a pencil? I have a pencil. And I would do it with these four columns, it looks like. This is a creepy little crypt. I like it, though. It's cool how the new locations just slowly unfold in this. Copper. Hmm, this indentation looks familiar. You can open it up. Using, aha, uh -huh, okay, so zinc, lead, nickel, iron, silver. How, how come I can P -B -C -U. look at P-B. C-U. So I can look at some of these. So copper is what's on Camille's, um, what do you call it, coffin here. So let's do the copper one, which I have written down in my notebook. So I'll put it here. Copper is green, red, purple, yellow, orange, and blue. Ooh, there is the last gemstone that we needed. That's six now. Okay, I'm really glad that her whole coffin didn't open up because that would be highly disturbing. Nancy has a notebook. Does that mean she just already has paper? Let's try it. Maybe she does. If there's a hidden message here, I'll never find it at this rate. Okay, so I, I need something need... that'll help me make sense out of all those lines. I do need paper from someone. Who will give me paper? Okay, 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 okay. Um, let's go back to the train, I suppose, because I don't. Well, actually, maybe there's some in the museum. Maybe she just has paper on hand. Welcome back! It was fun talking to you. Be right here if you got any questions. And also, our... Um... What fits here? Yes, this thing fits here. And I believe it was a lead that opens this up. Although, because that was the only other one that we could click on, although you would think it would show lead somewhere. I need to match that shape. Yeah, I know, you need to match that shape. Okay, so let's put this down and let's try the lead combination, which I also wrote down, which is red and green and blue and orange, yellow, purple. It worked. Oh, a lantern. Well, here's Jake's lamp. Oh, and another slug. Another slug. Could come in handy. Indeed. But where's his pickaxe? I do not know. Um, let's ask Fatima. She hopefully knows. You still here? Have you by any chance ever come across a pickaxe that had the initials JH carved into it? Why? Because it used to belong to Jake Hurley, and I really, really need it. I thought it would be in that old trunk, but it wasn't. You got that trunk open? <laughs> Wait till I tell Cousin Alvin. He thinks he's so smart. As for that pickaxe, so happens I got it upstairs in my kitchen. Use it to open the coconuts Aunt Lucy sends me every year from Hawaii. Do you think I could have it? Why, no, you can't have it. How would I open them coconuts? <laughs> That is a cookie to the upcoming game, Creature of Kapu Cave, number 15. They mentioned Hawaii, and that's where that game takes place. Um, but just... your great-great-uncle, do you really think Buell would approve of you using something that belonged to some poor miner to open coconuts? Oh, okay, I'll let you have the pickaxe. After you do something for me. Sure. I got a bunch of taffy over there what needs sorting. Just follow the directions that are posted by the machine. Them belts get moving pretty fast, so you gotta keep your wits about you. While you're doing that, I'll fetch that pickaxe. You got a deal. Alright, I get to go sort taffy now. So let's go to the taffy kitchen. Let's go to the taffy kitchen. There we go. <laughs> Didn't work for some reason. Wax paper for the taffy. Would you mind if I took a piece of wax paper? Yes, I could let you have a piece. Oh, yeah, that's what we can use for the rubbing. Perfect. Okay, there's some taffy. That does look really good, though. Okay, so I guess we start the machine, and we sort them by banana, mango, strawberry, apple, blueberry, grape, and then rejects. 
rejects, I guess we put down here. Okay. That's a reject. That's mango. Mango. Blueberry. Reject. Blueberry. Reject. Um, apple. Banana. Reject. Reject. Uh, strawberry. Strawberry. Grape. And grape. And a reject. And a strawberry. And a reject. And a banana. And a reject. And a mango. And an apple. Strawberry. Reject. Strawberry. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're good. We're awesome. We got wax paper and we sort of taffy. We're cool. Okay, Fatima. Chalk it over. Or hand it got over. Got that taffy sorted? No problem. That was easy. You sneak any freebies while you were at it? It was pretty tempting, but nope. I sure didn't. Well, ain't you the goody two-shoes? Truth is, wouldn't have minded too much if you had. Long as you fessed up to it. Here's the pickaxe. Cracked the handle pretty bad on the last batch of coconuts. You sure you want it? Positive. There you go. Don't hurt yourself. I won't. Thank you. Yeah, that is a beat-up pickaxe. <laughs> okay. Oh. Hello? Hey, it's Frank. I'm in the kitchen of the diner playing short order cook. Has that grandchild of Jake's engineer showed up yet? Just came in with this lady who's even older than he is. And get this, he's a retired miner, so every time I finish an order and ring the pickup bell, he thinks it's the mine shaft elevator bell. And for some reason it makes him start telling his lady friend about his grandfather. You mean you ring the bell and he starts talking about James Thurston? Exactly. Of course, five seconds later he's rambling on about something totally unrelated, but I just fill an order, ring the bell, and ding, he picks up right where he left off. That is, unless I fill the order wrong and the waitress chews me out. She's got a voice like a chainsaw. Very distracting. Sounds like you better keep your ears open and your nose to the grindstone. I am. Just wanted to keep you posted. Well, good luck. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Ooh, and now we get to play as Frank. So, we look at the order. We need to make a volcano burger with onions, jalapenos... Onions and jalapenos. Here we go. Peppers and hot mustard, bacon, and cheese. This must be the hot mustard, bacon, and cheese. That sounds like a really good burger. Okay, so that's done. You need to put that right there. So do you know what you want to order yet, Edna? I'm still looking. Did I tell you that my granddaddy was the engineer on a private train owned by one of the richest men that ever passed through Copper Gorge? Jake Hurley was his name. Yes, sir, my granddaddy was Jake's private engineer for more than 25 years. Told my daddy that men don't come any crazier than Jake Hurley, or any nicer. Treated my granddaddy real well and told him stuff. Real important stuff. Stuff he made my granddaddy swear to never ever forget. Stuff that my granddaddy told my daddy, and that my daddy told me. Why don't you get the egg salad, Edna? Shh. Eggs are back to being good for you, you know. Seems like just last year all those scientific types were saying your arteries would clog up if you so much as looked at an egg. But nowadays, why all of a sudden eggs are chock full of vitamins and proteins and eating them's not only okay, it's what they recommend. They should either make up their minds or keep their mouths shut. Make eating more pleasant, that's for sure. Yes, sir, Jake Hurley told my granddaddy things he never told another living soul. Not even his wife. I tell you about her, Edna? I don't think so. Camille was her name. Camille Boulet. That's French, you know. Of course, she died so young that poor Jake didn't have time to tell her anything. According to my granddaddy, one summer day she had a dizzy spell and fell and hit her head. She didn't take well to the heat, see, and sometimes in the summer, when they were going through the desert, why, that train would be just like an oven. Anyway, Granddad said she got right up afterwards and seemed okay. But a couple hours later, Jake found her in her room, 
dead as a doornail. Now there's another expression that kind of makes you wonder. Dead as a doornail? How can something be dead if it was never alive to begin with? Then why a doornail? Why not something else that begins with a D? Like dish rag or dust mop. Dead as a dust mop. That's kind of got a ring to it, don't you think? The way my granddaddy died, that was kind of strange too. I ever tell you how my granddaddy died? No, I don't think you did. My daddy, he came home from school one day to find a railroad official telling his mom that granddad been found dead in Blue Moon Canyon, Nevada. He was in the engine of Jake Hurley's train, just kind of slumped over with his hands still on the throttle. The strange thing is, nobody else was on board the train, yet the door to the engine was locked and barred. It was like granddad was trying to keep someone out, like he was running from something. Like something finally scared him so bad, his heart just stopped. Of course, he was in his 60s at the time, and back then, that was old. <laughs> Doesn't seem so old now, does it, Edna? Here I am, pushing 93, and still spry as a spring chicken. Spring chicken! Now, where do you suppose that expression came from? Why not spring goose or summer chicken? Ah, life's just one puzzlement after another, isn't it, Edna? Guessing you're going to bacon. I think that's everything. You're just have to, supposed to have everything except the peas. Um, ding? I ever tell you nice. about the mine my granddaddy said Jake heard he'd found? He found a mine? A couple years before he died, granddad told my daddy that Jake found a vein in the mountain somewhere and was mining it all by himself so no one would steal it out from under him. He wouldn't even tell granddad where the mine was. What he'd do is have granddad drive the train real slow so he could jump off without granddad seeing him. Then granddad would pick him up at a prearranged spot a few days later. Oh, they didn't call him Crazy Jay Curly for nothing. Speaking of crazy, you see how much Abner's charging for a haircut at that shop of his now? Twenty bucks! But what's even crazier is people are actually paying him that. I told him the only way I'd pay him twenty bucks would be if I came in with hair down to my knees. He just laughed and said I was a crazy one. Twenty bucks for a haircut? What is this world coming to? Oh! Sorry. <laughs> Continue game. But the craziest thing Jake Hurley ever did was tell Granddad the secret to finding his mind. He made him swear to tell it to my daddy and nobody else. Eventually, my daddy, he told me. And it was so bizarre that I remember it to this day. Though I sure don't understand how it had helped anybody find his mind. But since my daddy didn't tell me not to tell anybody, this is what Crazy Jake Hurley told Granddad, word for word. The eye of the tiger is fixed on a star. Zircon lies in fingers that scar. Amethyst floats in a hand from the deep. Citrine is what the foul mouth shall keep. Tourmaline by a soft arm is ensnared. Peridot rests at the foot of the mare. The eye of the tiger is fixed on a star. Zircon lies in fingers that scar. Amethyst floats in a hand from the deep. Citrine is what the foul mouth shall keep. Tourmaline by a soft arm is ensnared. Peridot rests at the foot of the mare. Frank, are you sure that's what he said? I'm positive. Are you sure that's all he said? Look, this guy was old, okay? I mean, we're talking Jurassic. And guys that old don't joke around. They don't have time to. What you just heard is what I heard, word for word. Got anything else? I almost forgot. You gotta check this out. It's just an old letter, Frank. You bet it's an old letter. From Samuel Clemens. Oh my gosh, where'd you get this? I found it in the caboose. Apparently he and Jake were pen pals. Wish I had a famous writer for a pen pal. When Joe gave it to me, I about flipped. I know I should turn it over to Lori, and I will, but it's just so darn cool. I still don't see what the big deal is. I mean, it's not like it's from Mark Twain or anything. What? It's exactly from Mark Twain. Mark Twain and Samuel Clemens are the same person, Joe. See you soon. You better. All right, we're going to leave this part right here. I will see you in the next part. Thanks for watching, fellow detectives. See you soon.